Hi, this is your coach, Joe Lucas, and welcome to this special episode of the Magellan Network Show. Hey, typically I come and I'll spend uh, 10, 15 minutes with you and uh, put a topic or an idea on the table and then uh, we riff through it. Uh, today, because everything that's going on in our world, right, uh, both from a health perspective and also from a, a business perspective, uh, what I want to do in this episode is share with you uh, everything I'm sharing with my clients. Uh, so, number one, pay close attention, take notes. Number two, I highly encourage you to forward this episode to colleagues, management, whoever you want. Uh, I'm going to share with you my 26 years of wisdom and, you know, 58, 50,000, 59,000 coaching sessions. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm asking my clients very specific questions. So I want you to think of these like areas or buckets, if you will. So we're going to cover all of these in, 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 this, uh, in this video. Uh, number one is, you know, where, you know, mindset, belief set. We're going to talk about that. Number two, what are you doing to lead your team? Number three, what are you doing to serve and lead your client? Number four, what are you doing to grow your business? So four things, okay? So let's kind of talk about the mindset. Because if you don't get this right, uh, quite frankly, the rest of it doesn't matter. You won't execute. Right now, you have a decision to make on the meaning of this, right? The human mind hates uncertainty. When we go uncertain, we go into fear mode. When we go in fear mode, we go irrational. And what irrationality means is we lose control over our internal dialogue. We start asking crazy questions. We start answering, we start answering with crazy answers, right? And then you, next thing you know, you kind of go, you go sideways and you don't know what to do. In essence, you're frozen and paralyzed. So one of the, so the questions I'm asking my clients are, hey, where's your mindset? Where's your belief set? And that's a question you've got to ask yourself. You have to have certainty in order to be effective. So what I normally do is say, okay, so do you think we'll be better or worse in 90 days, 120 days, 180 days, a year, three years, right? And I'll have a client pick. Well, I think we'll be out of this in 90 days. Okay, great. That is now your certainty. Well, I think we'll be out of this in, in 180 days. Great. That is now your certainty, right? When you have certainty you can now go ahead and be an effective communicator and an effective leader. The, if you're operating in the I don't know mode, you are screwed. So number one, create a level of certainty. Now, and I don't care about timelines. So here's the thing. Mine is about 90 days. I figure, you know, Memorial Day to 4th of July. Until then, this is going to suck. And I've told myself that. And that's not negative thinking, by the way. That's mental preparation for battle right? That's what this is, all right? And so we work on that. What else we do in mindset? So number one, declare what this means to you. Give it, give it a level of certainty, right? Next, what are you going to do to take care of you? So self-care is incredibly important for advisors. Look, the conversations you're having are more intense. They're more emotional. You're putting more mental and emotional outputs out there. Uh, it doesn't feel like physically, but I know a lot of you are going to be drained when you leave your offices. And the last thing you want to do is pluck down on the couch, order a pizza, and open up a six-pack. It's not in your best interest, okay? So even though a lot of the gyms may be closed or whatever's going on, hey, find a way to stay physically active, and by all means, please eat cleanly. Do not stress eat. Do not create challenges for yourself. I'm not a doctor. I just tell you, garbage in, garbage mindset. The way it works, right? So you need to ramp up the, your physical self-care. Now, your emotional self-care, turn the freaking news off, all right? Don't live or eat or breathe by it 24-7. Yes, I know you need to know what goes on. I get that. This is because you really can't do much, right? You can't go out, not traveling, stuff like that. This is a great opportunity to go on and to create some personal development projects, e-learnings, right? Uh, in practicepower.net, there's about 300 hours of free stuff. Find what you want. There's a ton of YouTube videos. Maybe you want to take a Kaplan course. Whatever you want to do. Now's the time to focus on you and reinvesting back in you. It, it, it will be a positive and a magnificent distraction. So all of us need to go into deep personal development mode. Make you a better mind-body, right? Take this opportunity, this pause, if you will, in society and create a new version of yourself, a better version of yourself, okay? 
So that's what we need to do. That's the mindset belief set, right? Feed your mind. If you haven't taken, look, I sucked at meditation for many years. A client of mine turned me on to Headspace. Last couple of years, I've been meditating every day. I know for some years, like, that's crazy. It works. I've converted many of my clients to it. It, it's you know how your body if you're if you're physical you want to stretch right so you don't injure yourself you want to be kind of fluid in things like that well meditation is like stretching for the mind kind of relaxes it kind of you know gets it in a good centered place and you're more effective right we are now in the you know we've always been but in times like this we are we are definitely in the influence leadership business and you cannot be in that inter you cannot be in that influence leadership business if you can't get yourself right. If you can't influence lead yourself, you're worthless to everybody else. So everything starts with you. Okay. Next, what are you doing to lead your team? So let's say number bucket number one is good. We go to bucket number two. What are you doing to lead your team? So this is where you know you've got to be checking. I know we're all busy. You know we're, you're triaging. You're fighting fires. You're talking to clients. I understand all that. But don't think your people are robots. They have fears. They have families. They have anxieties, right? Um, you need to talk to them, whether it's in a group or individually, and check in, see where their head's at. If you have younger advisors, you know, juniors that have not, were not through 08 and 09, you especially need to check in with them. They've never seen anything like this. Their whole existence in our business has been sunshine and roses and daffodils and all this other crazy stuff, right? And now they're they're like in the suck. And just because they maybe have their head down, it doesn't mean they're not freaking out. So check in and don't take BS. Make sure you get the truth. Okay? You don't want your you don't want your juniors going sideways on you when you're gonna need them the most. All right, so don't bury your, if you're a leader, don't bury your head in the sand and say, oh, I got so much to do. I get it. That's why your name's on the door, right? And also leaders, by the way, I talked to a client about this the other day who was a little sideways, in my opinion, um, because he had no plan. He said, you know, what about cash flow? What happens to stays the way it is? I said, well, what's your plan? He goes, I have none. I said, well, that's why you're freaking out. You have no plan. You're a planner and you have no plan. So take some time. Even if you have to do it over the weekend, you know, it may not be the best idea, but maybe the only way to get this done. Anytime you can create a plan and give yourself certainty, you're going to empower yourself. And when you're empowered, you can move the needle and take action, right? So check in with your people, do some extra nice things, bring in lunch, right? Bring in a chair massage person, like do little things like that. Obviously, I'm not going to run taking them out to lunch or public place or anything like that at this point. But do what you need to do to kind of keep morale high. You know, if you go back to any conflict in history, uh, militaries would always bring in entertainers, it's like that, for to boost morale. Don't think your people are, are, are immune to that, okay? Make little gestures. They'll mean a lot. So that's bucket number two. Bucket number three, what are you doing to serve your clients, right? You cannot have a case of the I don't knows. They're paying you to know. Hence bucket number one, right? Your clients, what you need to provide your clients is certainty and guidance and a steady hand and get them and, and drop their stress levels down, right? Human beings are all sensitive to uncertainty, some more so than, other, than others. By the way, the ones that are really freaked out are the ones that have a very, um, they're very sensitive to uncertainty. I'm one of those people, by I, I'm, I don't like uncertainty, so I always, with this, hurricanes here in Florida, whatever, I'm always creating certainty for myself. That allows me to, that allows me to remain effective. Okay? So this is about messaging your client. You have a choice. You're either going to let the media control the narrative to your clients, or you're going to control the narrative to your clients. So that means we've got to lead, we've got to communicate, We've got to influence. So that's messaging. So one-on-ones are great. If you have a book, big book of business, you just you just can't get to everybody all the time, right? So this is where technology, a worst case scenario, an email, right? A and again, calming, soothing, steady of the ship. It's I want you to think about if if you're this is a not the best metaphor, but let me give it to you. If you were in a car accident and you broke your leg and you went to the ER and the trauma doctor was freaking out because they looked at your leg, you would not feel good and not have confidence in that person. 
your clients need to have confidence in you, all right? And that is not saying the words. It is how you say the words. Your physiology, your voice quality, your, your, your congruency. Refer back to bucket number one. If you don't have that locked down, brother. You're, you'll fake this and it will not be authentic. Okay? So we communicate. Uh, I've got clients doing bomb bombs to their clients, video casts. I've got several clients that are holding like Zoom meetings, like like group Zoom meetings, just to kind of get information out there, to message. Do not worry about over communicating to your clients. Trust me, they're sucking a lot of information anyway. You don't want to get tsunamied by, well, you know, we're giving them 2% of what they're taking in and all the news broadcasters are giving them the other 98%. That is not a good recipe. So get in the communication business, right? You need to do that. Um, the other thing, virtual meetings, obviously, you know, if you're not using Zoom, go to meetings, Skype, WebEx, whatever. If you don't have that in your practice, you're, I don't tell you, you need to get it, right? You need this, this could fundamentally shift how this industry operates, depending how long this goes. You know, I've been predicting for a decade, uh, the real virtualness of our business. Like there's really no physical need to see people. Um, we're going to now put that to a test in a real world situation. And I think depending on how long it goes on, you know, we're going to come out of this. I know you may want to see people, doesn't mean they want to see you. And you can't sit there and say, well, I need to see people do my thing. Well, then you're limiting yourself, right? So make sure that you're taking care of your clients, ask them questions, do things like that, right? It's incredibly important. Care about them as people. A lot of you do, some of some you don't. Your portfolio first, people second. It's a massive mistake. That's where you're going to get commoditized, right? Uh, many of my clients say, I wish I can tell you who, who, who started this decades ago in my work. Um, we make money all the time. This is when we earn it in times like this. Never forget that, especially for some of you younger, younger men and women that have come into our space. Uh, this is when we really do earn our keep, right? Not when things are pretty and calm and everybody's, you know, happy, right? So make sure you're doing a good job, taking care of your clients, being proactive, no such thing as over communicating, like I said earlier. It's, it's just incredibly important you do that. You don't do not in need to inundate them with more market news, right? So it's one thing I will say is coach them. You've got to get you've got to help them with their like I'm helping you here in this video about hey, turn to get some all your clients. Hey, what are your hey, what hey, what can you do? You're bunkered down for the next three weeks, two weeks, month, whatever it's gonna be. What do you want to learn? Like do you want to pick up a hobby? Like that's the kind of things you need to be talking to them about. You know, maybe it's now a good time to binge that Netflix thing you've been thinking about for last year, right? Like, get people's minds off of this, right? You need to get them, I'll use the word distracted, so that they, they don't become fixated with this, right? Because when you get fixated with this, you lose your rationality, right? So create those things, right? One of my clients is putting together a list of, like, all on, like, uh, uh, you know, different like YouTube's and it, you, I think you, you, you cat, you, you, that you dynamic or something like that, where you have these online academies, learning centers and stuff like that, where people can pick up masterclass, right. For cooking and things like that. Like, don't be afraid to present those things to your clients and say, Hey, here's some things if you want to better yourself, right. Go do right. Um, we all need to be productive. Human beings, most human beings have, have a natural, um, belief that they need to be productive. And when somebody's like, feels like they're locked down, they feel like a little bit like a caged animal. So give your give your clients an opportunity or present them uh, resources, right, to remain productive, all right? So that's taking care of the clients, all right? And just, just be there for them. I think that's really the most important thing, all right? And again, the only way you can do that at the highest level, refer to bucket number one. Now, bucket number four. What are you doing to develop business? So, so this is where um, I saw this in 08, 09 vividly, and I believe we're going to kind of operate in the same modality here. So in 2008, 2009, um, you know, I watched the industry, I watched my client base fall into two broad categories, uh, reactionary people and people that were proactive. So the reactionary ones were, oh my God, what does this mean? Am I going to be in business? It was a bunch of me things, right? Me, 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 my money. Oh my God, my, my managed money is going to be down 30%. And, you know, it's all about them. And those people really got inside their own head. They locked themselves up and they really did nothing proactively. They held on. Now, reality is, as long as you, long as you stayed the course, things came back, business is good. 
you did not learn mentally anything. You did not build any new skill sets, any mental toughness. And now those same people, fast forward, you know, 10, 12 years later, are now operating the same way. Oh my gosh, what does this mean? Da da da, you know, and now they're back. And this is probably going to be, unfortunately, a majority of our, a majority of our industry, right? So that's, that's option A, not the option I recommend for anybody here. Option B. Look at this and say, it's going to suck. Not going to be pleasant, but I have a once in a decade, because it seems like it's every, de every decade, I have a once in a decade opportunity where my marketplace is in dire need of what I do. The challenge that this industry has had the last decade is, for the most part, our marketplace was fat, dumb, and happy. Hey, even if I didn't like my advisor, every time I opened up my statement, logged in, I was making money, right? Never hear from the person. Counts up. I'm not thrilled, but we never got to that pain. We never got to that point of inflection for a lot of people that they needed more. And then everybody, and then the other part, right? Well, they were all mini hedge fund guys, right? Well, I don't need you. I don't need to hire you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, I'm going to go to Vanguard and do my thing, right? Or I'm going to go to E-Trade and do my thing, right? Because, you know, monkey, in the last 10 years, nothing against some of you money managers and guys who run portfolios. Monkey dartboard, right? Things go up. You didn't have to be a rocket science to pull that off, right? Now we're in a different game. So here's what my clients are doing, and here's some results. Uh, so number one, uh, I would highly recommend every one of you go back to every prospect of the last three to five years. You can go back further if you like. So whether you did seminars, got referred to people, COIs, network, it doesn't matter. Whoever you sat with or talked with, I would sort of put your ego aside. This is not about you. Go contact them. Reach out. Be of service, right? Offer a conversation. Nobody's coming to anybody's office. So don't even put that offer out there. It's, it's, it's not going to happen, right? What we're selling now are conversations. So put it out there in email. You don't have to email, text, whatever you're allowed to do. You don't need to get on the phone and do this. And just say, hey. You know, I want. I know you and I. Just, I know you and I uh, did not do business. I understand that, but I also want to let you, you know that I'm still here for you as a resource. If you have any questions about your money, investing, what to do, I'd love to share with you my my five strategies that I'm working with all my clients on, and love to have the conversation with you about that. Let me know. Very simple. Now, some of you just said, "Well, Joe, what are the five strategies?" They're going to be different for all of you. I'll give you a couple. So obviously, one number one, you know, debt refinancing, risk tolerance, asset allocation, finance, you know, one on one stuff. Don't need to. We don't need to create new things, right? Just execute the things that you know. But by putting something out there specific, five things, three things, eight things, you decide what what that means to you. You now entice them to want to engage you in a conversation because we're being a little bit more specific. Remember. Human beings need, in times of perceived crisis, right? And I'll use that word just for this conversation. People need, have an instinctive need to take an action. It's called flight or fight, right? So action either I run or action two I fight, right? It's, it's hardwired into our DNA, into our mindsets. That's why you see people buying toilet paper, right? They got to do something. So my gosh, what if they run out of toilet paper, right? And so it's, it, that's not a rational thought. But people feel like that's why they're emptying store shelves, right? They feel like they need to take an action. So if you present an offer to your marketplace that gives them an opportunity to take an action when it comes to their money, their investments, their finances, they're going to be a little bit more hardwired to take advantage of that. Now, that does not mean that you're going to get a 50% response rate or 75% response rate. Our response rates are 25 to 5%. Right. So it's not like, oh, my God, you know, I'm flooded with prospects. But if you work it, you will get people who want to have conversations with you. And by the way, a lot of people will just appreciate the fact you're thinking about them. Right. So, so that's what we want. So that's the one thing that my clients are doing. Right. The second thing my clients are doing is we're going out to all of our clients and we're being very, especially if you've got joint custody of your client's money. So that means that I've got some of their money, some of it may be at Vanguard, some of it may be a competitor, whatever it happens to be. And, you know, in the past, my, my strategies were always, you know, talk about it, see if they're open to, you know, consolidation, stuff like that. We're not doing that now. 
we're being very upfront, you know, especially if you know you're serving your clients well, you're being really proactive, you're doing absolutely what's in their best interest, and, and you're, you know, you're, you're really contributing at a high level. I got no problem with you calling that client up or next time you have a conversation saying, hey, you know, I know about your Vanguard account. It, it's really now in your best interest to bring it to me so I can watch it. Or I know you've got some money with XYZ. It's really now in your best interest to bring it to me so I can watch it. Like make a very, a very clear offer. Don't beat around the bush. This is, this is not the time for ambiguity in our conversations and in our communication. You want to go ahead and just speak the truth. If you believe that is the truth, then I hope you do refer back to bucket number one, right? So make offers to, you know, for, you know, consolidation. Let's kneecap our competitors. Not a bad term. Okay. Especially if they're not doing their job. So if they're like asleep at the wheel, not talking to their clients, they don't deserve the relationship in my opinion. All right. And by the way, sidebar conversation. This has a very good chance of taking out a lot of the weaker advisors. The ones that been there, done that. They're not going to change. They're not going to evolve. It's all about them. Right. It's all about them making money. Um, this could be their meteor dinosaur event. Right. And get them out. As an industry, calling our herd, not a bad thing, okay, in my mind, long term. So don't be afraid to go ask for the rest of your client's capital if you have joint custody, okay? The next thing we're doing, we're being very, very clear with our clients that we're here to serve their friends and family, loved ones, colleagues, neighbors, doesn't matter. And we're bearing, and the languaging is very, very clear on that, not, hey, if you know someone, which is what we typically would do. It's Mr. and Mrs. Client, as a service to you, I wanna let you know that myself and my team are here to answer any and all questions that any of your any of your friends have, family have, loved ones have, colleagues, anything that we can do to be of service, not worried about their wealth. We're just here to provide guidance if they need it. So please keep that in mind, right? You put that in an email, you put it into a conversation, and you do that, right? You really go ahead and do that. Now, the next piece, you, again, the, the, this is the developed business bucket. You go to all your CO, all your centers of influence, influence, all your COIs. And what you do, especially CPAs, which I know it's tax season, but really it's not anymore because of the deadlines. Remind your CPAs and your tax preparers, hey, you're probably going to have conversations where people are going to ask you questions. Reminder, we are here to help your clients. We are here as a resource for your clients, right? So the whole psychology behind bucket number four is to go ahead and serve, is to get out there. And if you serve enough people, the byproduct of that service will be business opportunities, right? But I don't want you to have the mentality of, oh, man, we got to get out there and get business today. I want you to go out there and serve your, serve your fellow man, your fellow woman. That's what I want you to do. Be of service. Inside of, inside of my group game, Magellan Network, every day I'm talking to the group about just be of service. Put it out there that you're here. I've got clients that are going to be open, that are going to have open phone lines on Saturday. So, you know, they push it out to their clients, to their COIs, to their LinkedIn family, to their Facebook family. Hey, Saturday, 9 to 12, here's the number. Open phones. Questions. Want to just talk about what's going on? You want some advice, some guidance? I'm here for you. I'm here for my, my LinkedIn family, my Facebook family. And you just put it out there massively. Massively. Okay? So optimize the clients. By the way, also, you know, again, one of the things, this is not my area of expertise. So I'm going to parrot what my clients are telling me. Re refinancing of debt, tremendous, one, I mean, once in a lifetime opportunity, right? So focus on things that are proactive and positive for your clients, right? And don't focus on the things you really don't have a lot of control over, all right? So optimization there. Referrals, right? We just talked about getting the word out that we're here to help and serve. And by the way, I will tell everyone that those clients of mine are taking this action or getting more referrals. We're seeing it definitely. People want to talk, man. They do. So don't, you know, don't leave this, you know, by the wayside, all right? Make sure you do that. All right, so we've got the referral game. We're going to leverage that. We've got our COI game. We're going to reach out. This is this is about communication 
and being absolutely consistent with that, right? So we got our CRO, we got our COI game. Now, seminars, client events, not going to happen for foreseeable future. So, so you need to shift your business models, right? I would go virtual. I think our society is going to learn. Even 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 people that are a little bit older are going to learn to love, you know, virtualness, streaming, Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, go to meeting, all that jazz. Um, I would if you're if you're if you have the possibility of doing this, I would definitely be doing webinars, WebExes, open call lines, open Zoom calls. I would just like just make yourself available, triage everyone, right? Don't worry about ideal right now as an industry. I think we don't need to worry about ideal clients or any of that stuff. Just go serve. Be number one, it's gonna make you feel good. Number two, it will create business opportunities for you, right? And now we're playing offense. This is the biggest thing I tell my clients is look, if you're gonna be on defense, this is gonna suck 10 times worse for you because you're just gonna feel like you're getting kicked in the stomach for the next 90 days, 180 days, whatever it's gonna be. And it's not gonna be fun. It's gonna put you in scarcity mode. If you go play offense, it mitigates that, right? You feel like you're moving things forward. You're moving, you know, you're moving things. And by the way, I have not declared to any of my clients it's time to change our goals for the year. Not there, right? So for some of you that are thinking, oh man, my year's shot in the butt, not necessarily. What really is going to depend is how you respond to this. That will determine whether or not you're done or not for the year when it comes to goals. Okay? So keep that in mind. And with all the social networks that we now have available, I do have clients, and I will share this with everyone. So, you know, it's going to be an interesting strategy. So I can't say, hey, this works yet. But I've got several clients that are going to that have created a message. And they're going to be posting it, not posting it. They're going to be messaging it to 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 LinkedIn contacts, uh, messaging to their Facebook uh, friends, you know, all their contacts there. Basically, what I just said, parroting, hey, you know, I may not know you, but I want to let you know that, I'm, uh, that you know, I'm here as a resource. Uh, I've got five or six things that we're doing for our clients proactively. I'd be happy to share them with you. Uh, if you want to grab a quick call, you know, calendarly, schedule ones, whatever, right? Or just email me back. I'll set up a time to talk. And I and we're getting results. Again, you're not going to get 50% response rates or 25% response rates, two and a half to five, which is about a two to 500% increase over what you're going to get. And you play the one at a time game, right? That's what this industry needs to do to be viable to add massive value to our marketplaces. And as I said, you as an advisor have got to choose. Are you going to play offense? Or are you just going to sit on defense and take the body blows? Right? I've given you four buckets. Mindset beliefs, your team, your clients, your marketplace. Four things. If you were to go ahead and execute these things, and, and this is not advice I just cooked up this morning. This is after 26 years of doing this. I am certain that this will enhance your business, your life, and those around you. Take care of you, mind, body. Take care of your people, your team. Take care of your clients. Take care of your marketplace. Get external. Don't make this about you and how this is affecting you. You're going to get inside your head, and when you're inside your head, you're dead. Stay external. Serve others. Lead. Become a leader. We need leaders now more than ever in this industry. You need to lead your clients. You need to lead your team. Do not go into a client meeting. Oh, I don't know. The word I don't know eviscerate out of your vocabulary. Get rid of it. It's not going to serve you. Lastly, all of you can come work with me for 30 days. I've included a link. There's a very short application. It gets you inside of my, my group coaching world. And this is the kind of stuff we work on every day. Hope this video found you found value with it. And again, forward it to, to colleagues in the industry. Doesn't matter. Wirehouse, independent, insurance, financial planner, XPYN, doesn't matter. Hopefully you find these to be words of wisdom. Forward this to your management. Like I said, been at this thing for over a quarter century. You have, if you choose to, one of the greatest business building opportunities 
of a lifetime. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Stay strong and go play offense. So there you have it. If you really enjoyed watching this episode, go ahead and subscribe to the Magellan Network Show with Coach Joe here on YouTube. And remember, I'm always here to help you become a better entrepreneur, business owner, and financial advisor. With that, I'll see you next time on the Magellan Network Show with me, Coach Joe. Take care and goodbye.